Sounds great. Susie! Oh, gosh, Christy, hi! Oh, it's great to see you. Look you wonderful. Too, this is Dean. Hi, Dean. Hi, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. <gasps> what? No! <laughs> the high pitched girls will not be seen tonight so that we can bring you the following episode of Almost Live. It's Almost Live! With me, Pat Cashman, Tracy Conway, Bob Nelson, Bill Stanton, Nancy Guppy, Steve Wilson, and Ed Wyatt. And starring John Keister. And some people think that Almost Live only appeals to dull-witted, sheep-like plods. Well, I would like tonight's studio audience to help refute that. Repeat after me, please. We are not dull-witted, sheep-like plods. We are not dull-witted, sheep-like plods. Who will go along with anything they are asked to do or say. Who will go along with anything they are asked to do or say. All right, fine. All right, fine. All right, drop it. And now, here he is. John, 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 John. Keister. Wow! Woo! Yes, we're all excited here to welcome you to Almost Live. I'm John Keister. This is the beginning of our ninth season in Seattle. Thank you very much. Oh, it's kind of a tough proposition. Also, it's around the country. It's very tough. We'll all work on it together. We'll sort of, you know, get a form letter out. A lot of folks from the hills of West Virginia, they've been tuning in. They've packed up their trucks. They're heading for Kent. They are. <laughs> They took one look at our show and said, them's our kind of people. <laughs> so they're on their way. Set an extra plate at the caveman. All right, they're on their way. Also, I'm proud to announce that Al Gore is in town tonight. Hi, Al. Hi. I hope you're, I hope you're watching. I hope Tipper isn't, but just in case. Parental advisory, almost live, contains explicit comedy, parents beware. There, that should take care of it. But uh, Al, you really, you know, if you are, you shouldn't be watching. Now that the debates are all worked out, you should be spending every possible moment getting ready for the big debate with Dan Quayle. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think that Vegas has even taken bets on that one. I don't, <laughs> mighty Mariners, and get rid of that lame-o Dave Craig. <laughs> We gave Craig to, the, to Kansas City, those suckers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, at least we've got the, uh, the Huskies. We still have the Huskies. Right? That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah, always a safe applause line there. And yeah, they, they, took, they took a big step towards the Rose Bowl today. Uh, USC lost, but at least no one shot at them, which is, you know, <laughs> right. Do you see that, you know, one of their players was shot last week. Uh, a stray bullet hit him in practice. And see, the thing is, there's too many guns out there. And up here in Seattle, we're trying to cut down on the number of guns with the gun buyback program. You know, you know how that works. You've just been just going on this week. You, you turn in a gun, you get 50 bucks. And a lot of other areas thought that sounded like a good way to get rid of their problems. So they've, there are lots of buyback programs that are starting up all over the state. For example, in Linwood, they're buying back blue eyeshadow, all shades. <laughs> No questions asked. They're buying it back. Chehalis, they're buying back those fancy wines with corks. They're buying... In Bellingham, negative karma. They're going to buy that back. Over at Nordstrom, they're buying back anything. You bring it back, they'll buy it back. Anything. Uh, University District, uh, they're buying back dreadlocks on white people. A big buyback program in Ballard. They're buying back the Clapper. All they're trying to buy. In uh, Puyallup, books. They don't want any in town. They're buying back. And finally, at Hanford, they'll buy back any third appendage. If you have a third appendage, go to Hanford. They'll buy it back. Wow. Whoa. Uh, yeah. 
Boy, nice way to start the season here. This is great. Once again, uh, we, I, we, we want to congratulate the Huskies once again, but the, uh, the biggest athletic news this year certainly was the Summer Olympics. It's warming up right now is uh, Helmut Marcellonis of the Lithuanian team. And he is one of the cool dyers uh, we're starting to see increasingly out of Lithuania now. He signaled that he's uh, ready to go. I believe Marcellonis now is going to take an arrow to the heart. Which he, oh, there we go. Okay, there. He's got the arrow. And a good fall. And oh, he's yeah. down and he's down. Oh, yeah. Very yes. good. Very, very good. good. I expect that Marcellonis could move into the lead with this. He should get very good. Yes, scores. he does. 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 Very good. A marvelous effort. Yes, and he's certainly set the mark for this young woman. This is Sheila Frazier of Australia, who is now going to attempt a shark attack. A shark attack. Yeah, very good. She, she is brilliant at this. I have seen this before. There she's Here swimming. comes the shark, doesn't suspect a thing, and all of a sudden, boom, there it is. Right there. The Australian team, uh, this is very common in their homeland. They're very good at this. Look at that. She's just thrashing the shark oh. feed here. Let's look. Ooh, disappointing. Wow. Disappointing that, score. Much lower than, well, apparently the judges saw something they didn't like. Now, this is America's hope for the gold, and the current world record holder, Craig Baker from Mission Viejo, California, doing his patented machine gun. And nobody in the world does this better. Okay, here goes Baker. There, he's getting the bullets. Oh, very good machine gun. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I think he broke, go back. I believe he broke his fall. The judges are not going to like that at all. A big Look error. at this in slow motion. He's falling. And then look at that. He breaks his fall. Go back. See, someone really dying would never put their arm out like uh, He that. gave it away right there. A major mistake. On I his believe part. this is going to cost USA the gold, and it does. And that has got to be heartbreaking for him to come so far and to leave with nothing. And warming up now, Gordon McKenzie of Canada. Canada quite new to international competition. Yes, not too skilled, actually. Yes, Gordon is going to be riding a pony and get shot off. Well, mm. that was an extraordinarily <laughs> unimpressive. Kenzie knows it, and uh, he has, he's gone. Very low score. Uh, warming up now is Yuri Valdikov of the Unified Team. Notice how he's trying to take the psychological edge with his warm-up routine. Although here. he has chosen an extremely low degree of difficulty, which I don't understand at this point in the competition. Yeah, very. This is, uh, this is peculiar. Mm. Simple uh, shot to the gut. And, and down, down he goes. And, you know, performed well, but... Yes, but so what? I the, mean... Yes, absolutely. I mean, the most he could hope for... A major tactical error on his part. Uh, boy, the unified team not known for such errors. All right, here now is the leader from Germany, Heike Hollerwitt. Uh, if she can just hold on here. She's chosen uh, electrocution. In all the she needs chair. to do is make no mistakes. That's okay, all she needs and, to do. And the gold is hers. Let's watch. Okay, there. The current is flowing through her. She's shaking. She's got a lethal dose. Nice, and... nice, nice. Oh, and she yes. sticks to death. She Very does it nice. wonderful. That should and she knows it. She knows score. it. Look at this. Yes. And there it is. She's Very got nice. the gold. And what a champion she is. Yes, the other cool dying athletes congratulating her. Let's take another look at the gold medal winner. And the head drop. Right there. Absolutely wonderful job. Absolutely. There she is. The gold medal winner, Heike Hollerbit of Germany, the cool dying Olympic champion. Promotional consideration for Almost Live provided by Ballard Computer in Seattle, Kirkland, and now open in Tacoma. Monday on A Woman's Place, tips for guy watching on the beach and how to know if it's all him. Oh, all that and a new diet drink made with cottage cheese and beer. That's Monday on A Woman's Place. Good evening, and welcome to Book Beat, a pre- It's Timothy Hornlackner. All right, Mr. Hornlackner, your no, book No, that, that's not right. It's, it's, it's not right? My name is Adrian Cheenflicker. Adrian Cheenflicker. <laughs> no, Montel Shanker. Montel Shanker. Shankerton. Uh, Montel Shankerton? Felix Shankerton. <laughs> Felix Shankerton. <laughs> Junior. Or information. Well, then how are we going to conduct our interview? Anyway, <laughs> the thing is, I always write my books under a pseudonym. Oh, you do? Well, fine. And what's that? Loretta Crowther. <laughs> Loretta Crowther. No, no. Imogene Flamruzel. 
<laughs> Look, for the purposes of our interview here tonight, why don't I just call you Mr. X? Hmm? Why? Because you won't give me your real name. No, I mean, call me Y, because I like Y better. That's <laughs> really one of my favorite okay. letters okay, okay. in the alphabet. All right, now, why? Why? Yeah. What's the title of this new book that you've written? We're really running out of time here, so uh, let's get around to telling what the book is about. <laughs> I would rather not get into that, <laughs> if you don't mind. No, of course not, no. I would just like people to be able to go out and buy the book and enjoy it, you know, without dragging a bunch of preconceived notions into it. I just think that would ruin it for people. You know, it could, but, you know, is it fiction? Is it nonfiction? Well, there, there are Again, ma'am, I think every reader should approach it with an open mind. Now, for some people, sure, it's going to be fiction. For others, non-fiction. Some people might see it as a biography. Other people as a cookbook, maybe. All right, now look. <laughs> now, if we somehow knew what this book was called, yeah, and if we knew what it was about, yes, ma'am. And if for some <laughs> crazy reason we knew who wrote this book, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what fine bookstores could we go to and buy the damn thing? <laughs> it, it's a very nice book, Pam. I'm sure it is. What stores? Well, actually, I, I don't uh, want... God, I know! I know! You don't want to tell us what the fuck it is! You don't want to tell us where we can buy it! You don't want to talk... It's not available. Not okay. in stores. <laughs> All right, fine. Sheesh. <laughs> but you could order it by mail. All right, by mail. Yeah. And what's the address to order it by mail? I would rather I'm not. I'm not killing you. I'm not killing you. Amplification for Almost Live, provided by American Music. Tuesday on A Woman's Place, how to start a bad haircut support group. <laughs> Using PMS to get whatever the hell you want. And we'll show you how to iron your cellulite. All that and brightening up your gun rack with ceramic daisies. That's Tuesday on A Woman's Place. <laughs> Hey kids, it's time once again for Uncle Fran's Musical Forest. Hi kids, I'm Uncle Fran. I'm a little ticked off. Sometimes I get mad, but I will always be your friend. Hi kids, and welcome to Uncle Fran's Musical Forest. Let's start today with a special song for some of the brain-challenged kids in my neighborhood. Remember? It don't matter if you're black or white. Yellow, red, it's all the same to me, just as long as you stay off my lawn. <laughs> stay the hell off my lawn, you little brats. I know who you are. Uncle Fred, that's not very nice. Mr. Raccoon? Yes? Shut up. <laughs> now, kids, as you probably know, the FCC has a stupid rule to keep kitty show hosts like myself from selling you stuff. It's the same kind of lame-ass thinking that came up with the community property rule in divorce case. <laughs> Help them out by your favorite TV personality. It's called, I'll See You in Hell, Uncle Fran's Bitter Love Song, and it's available. I can't. Uncle Fran, I feel uncomfortable doing this. Oh, you feel uncomfortable, do you? Yes. No. See if this feels uncomfortable. Oh! Is that feel uncomfortable? I'm sorry, what? Yes! Yeah, I thought so. I hate those stupid bitches. <laughs> but otherwise, everyone in this world is special. Well, kids, it's all the time we have for today. So long, kids, from Uncle Fran. I'm a little ticked off. Sometimes I get mad. <laughs> but I will always be your friend. So long.
Welcome to the John Report. I'm John. Here's my report. During testimony in her recent divorce case, Ramtha Chandler, Jay-Z Knight, said she has also channeled Jesus. And on a clear night, she can sometimes bring in HBO and the movie channel for free. <laughs> Vice President Dan Quayle will be in Tacoma on Monday. He almost canceled the visit after someone warned him about, about Tacoma smelling, and Quayle thought they said spelling. <laughs> Problems with the King Dome roof have been blamed on seagulls pecking at the sprayed-on plastic coating. Bird experts say that as the gulls are pecking, they're making noises that sound like they're saying, let us in, we can pitch better than that. <laughs> when he discovered that someone else had already used the title, the sorrow and the pity. <laughs> the American Association of University Women wants Mattel to recall Talking Barbie because she says, math class is tough. Mattel has complied and will soon release a new talking Barbie that says, math class is tough, it hurts my head, I can't do it, how's my hair? <laughs> Microsoft, Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen wants to build a Jimmy Hennessy declassified top secrets of the H-bomb. Among the first secrets released are it's really loud, it's really bright, and it works really good. <laughs> Uh, it turns out that during the Gulf War, Patriot missiles hit only four out of 47 targets that they aimed at. In light of this, the government has decided to rename the Patriot the Kelly Stoffer missile. <laughs> Finally, production has finished on a, a movie shot locally titled Sleepless in Seattle. The producers are reluctant to give away the plot, but they did admit that it's obviously not about Boeing workers. This has been the John Report. Thank you. Wednesday on A Woman's Place. He was young, kind of shy, even a little innocent. But you, as an adult woman, helped open him up to the pleasures of a mature, passionate love affair. Now you have to find a way to tell your son. His friend Billy won't be able to play catch every afternoon. We'll show you what to say. All that and how to clean your phone book cover. That's Wednesday on A Woman's Place. And now, the lame list. Or what we this week. Brought to you by America's heavy metal community. Lame. Parole officers who aren't flexible. Lame. Decaffeinated coffee. Lame. How far the concept of eminent domain extends when sacrificing the right of the individual for the public good. Christian heavy metal bands. <laughs> Having to wait till 11 to see footage of the plane crash. Lame! Totally lame. Excusable. Seattle, see you next week. Bye bye. Live, provided by Pizzeria Pagliacci, featuring traditional and gourmet pizza by the slice. Pizzeria Pagliacci, rated Seattle's best pizza.